Hello and everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and today we are looking at a very, a, a very weird looking shuttle. Yeah, this is, um, this is a weird looking, isn't it? Um, this was actually a, a canceled NASA project that I will talk to you guys about when we get into orbit, but first of all, we need to get this shuttle launched, because we need to get to the exciting bits so you guys can obviously leave when I talk about the boring bits. So, um, just turning on the SAS now, firing up the three vector engines and the two SRBs, and now we are in the air, just kind of bonking the, punking the launch clamps as we get, get off the ground and into the sky, and we can begin our ascent to orbit. This uh, shuttle is identical to the normal NASA shuttle in almost every way, except for that giant hump on the top, obviously. But um, it is powered by the two SRBs and then the three RS-25 engines, or the vectors, which are the Kerbal analog to the RS-25. And we're going to do the standard departure procedure and be pitching over doing our gravity turn and be across 10 kilometers right about now. Uh, another thing is I did start to use the astronomer's visual pack for uh, the, this video, um, just to see if you guys think like it more, maybe not, I don't know. It has some, it has good stuff and it has bad stuff, so if you guys like it, I will continue to use it. But that is beside the point, because we are now staging the two SRBs away, and now it is just the orbiter and the orange fuel tank with the ridiculous fairing at the top, um, getting its way uh, into orbit. I might as well explain what is going on here. So, um, one, one, one day in yonder, NASA was, NASA was thinking, they were thinking, what, what could we do to improve the shuttle? What could we, what, what? What would be the obviously normal thing we could do? And what did they come up with? They came up with this. What their solution was, was to put a payload in the orange fuel tank. So that fairing, you can actually, in real life, it expands to over 10 meters. And you could actually put a fairing, in, or not a fairing, a payload inside of that fairing in the orange tank. And then it would double as a, orange tank would double as um, an, a, a payload carrier. So um, the main reason they did that um, was because the shuttle's cargo bay did not have the, um, Welcome, welcome to space, by the way. Um, yeah, just gonna start to do our orbital insertion burden, just like normal. Uh, we are actually gonna be heading towards, we're gonna be rendezvousing with something. You might be able to see what that is, but I'll talk a little more of that in a second. I wanna finish up with this uh, the space shuttle here. So they were gonna put mirrors uh, in the, um, in the they, they wanna fl fly mirrors, right? Because, you know, mirrors are important and like for telescopes and stuff. So, but they couldn't fit in the NASA space shuttle. Like the, the shuttle bay wasn't big enough. So they said, what, what could we, what, what would be the most logical solution? to this problem and then they said oh what if we just put a giant hump in the front of the orange tank and put a payload there um, so that's um that was a plan that they they actually thought about obviously it didn't happen because that's some stupid plan but um, you know actually to be honest it's not the worst there are many worse plans uh, that NASA has come up with um, and there are better plans that NASA has come up with and gotten nowhere on like uh, <laughs> SLS but um, that's basically the story. Scott Manley has a great video on this, so I'll, I'll link his um, I'll link his uh, his video in the description where I got most of the information for this from. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's actually, it's actually got it got far enough to get an ardor surrendering. So you guys can I'll throw that on screen right now. You guys can see what it would have looked like. It's it's kind of nuts, but uh, either way, uh, we are in orbit now, and I might as well talk about what we're doing because going into orbit and then landing that's that's just kind of boring. So what we are going to be doing is, if you recall from a video I did, uh, not that maybe two weeks ago, I'll put a link a card up there in a second, uh, where I crashed an asteroid into the into a space station, um, and it, yeah, it was pretty cool. Everything exploded, but the asteroid, in fact, didn't explode, and it's still hanging out in orbit. So I'm like, huh. Well, um, we might as well go do something with that. So, I am going to be deorbiting that asteroid and um, and bringing it down to the surface of Kerbin, or well, crashing it. Well, it's an interesting. You'll have to stay tuned. The asteroid kind of has a weird set of events as it comes into land. But um, so, just opening up the payload. We actually have two payloads. Um, because, yeah, we do. So, um, one payload, uh, which is the one you're looking at right now, is uh, actually going to be the deorbiting stage, which is going to get the asteroid out of orbit. And then the uh, second one you have right there, first of all, there's technically three payloads, um, because the size of the shuttle's cargo bay, I had to have um, the one, the, the deorbit stage actually has to dock with um, the grabbing stage, or the grabbing stage, the, uh, the grabbing thing. So basically, these two will dock together, and then this this uh, smaller one will just serve as a, a grabbing arm. Um, so can I, the payloads can actually attach. Uh, the other one, other payload is basically serves as a control point. Um, 
for the craft um, because during re-entry, spoiler alert, it gets very, very warm and um, Kerbal stuff is not known to survive in warm heat. Um, so uh, this the, the deorbiting stage because it's facing straight on to the atmosphere gets shrekt by by the atmosphere. So we do need some sort of control point um, as the asteroid comes in to land. Um, so basically, I have uh, another another the other payload uh, basically just has a little control point on it that we can use to. Um, to use so we can actually like focus on the asteroid and actually see what's happening otherwise we just it, you know the camera just you know and it end our flight I also put parachutes on that thing just in case I could actually get the asteroid to parachute down but that that didn't work because uh, fun fact uh, this might be cool. I might <laughs> ramble a little bit here but asteroids are insanely aerodynamic like they are for no reason extremely aerodynamic like you'll see when we do the re-entry here in a few minutes that it just they they do not slow down for anything this, I don't I don't get it maybe it's because they're so heavy and they have so much momentum I really don't know why but they are they're just they don't like cooperating but uh, now we're decoupling that other payload I guess that wasn't too much of a rant um, and one thing I was worried about because how I attached the, the, um, the payloads I don't know if you guys saw you might be able to you probably won't be able to see again but there's a I had a little interstage node for the fairing on for a fairing that I kind of used to attach the two um, payloads in the orange tank together with. And yeah, as you can see right there, there um, you just saw for a second, the fairing interstage node was blocking my advanced grabbing unit. So I was afraid that we weren't be able to grab. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to redo the mission. Like, oh, that's lame. But um, luckily it was the grabbing unit was able to grab through the, um, through the interstage node for some reason. I don't know why, maybe because it was slightly clipped through or just, it just, that other part is physics list, but oh, I got a text, guys. Who text? Oh no, someone's probably complaining that I haven't uploaded. I know it was a. Uh, I tried to get up early, but I, you know, it was a weekend. Um, today was actually daylight savings day for me. So if you don't, if you don't, if you don't live in America, we have this thing called daylight savings day. I'm just, you, saving time. You know what it is. You know where the times times change. So that was for me last night. So. It is like an. It would be an hour later without. So today it's 25 hours in it. So um, apologies for any European viewers where this video will be coming out later, and all my future videos in the next six months are going to be coming out later, uh, just because of the time change. But uh, yeah, I, I, daylight saving doesn't make any sense. I do like this one though when I get an extra hour of sleep. But either way, um, we're now actually going to remove the payload around to the back, so these guys are kind of facing in opposite directions. And then we can get ready to deorbit the asteroid in just a moment, but first of all, we are going to have to deorbit the shuttle and the orbiter and bring it back to the Kerbal Space Center because we can't just have it hanging around in orbit. That's not what I do. I don't have, I totally don't have 480 pieces of debris in my safe. That's not a thing that I have. Um, uh, so uh, we're gonna go re-entry now, and that'll be fun. Get some hip music going on here for our for our landing. I really like this song. Um, there's one this one guy in YouTube Studio. Uh, the, you, this is where I get most of my music from is the Studio Library. Well, I also get you know the Kerbal music because you know I'm playing Kerbal Space Program. I forget his name. It's like Quincy something, but he has great music. So if you're in need of uncopyrighted music, that's the guy. You just have to you can just search the song that I used. Um, actually, you probably couldn't. And eh, maybe I'll put his name in the description. Um, Another thing, guys, um, I would like to thank you guys for I hit 550 subs uh, yesterday, and I, that's crazy because I hit 500 like two days ago, and like 400. I hit 300 literally two and a half weeks ago. It's kind of nuts, so you guys are crazy. You guys, thank you. If you want to subscribe, feel free to subscribe. Um, uh, you know, the button's right there. Just, yeah, it's fine. It's fine if you don't want to. I don't care. Um, well, I mean... I care a little bit if you don't like my, my videos, because I would I would love to improve. So if you if, if you don't like it, let me know why you don't like it. I mean I mean there are tons of reasons. Like you know I'm annoying. I'm really annoying. I'm a bad person. All those are valid reasons. My 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 shuttle is horrible. Those are all valid reasons for not liking me. But another well what's going on in the video right? So I'm coming in. Um we do not use the runway here today because runways are fake news. So we're just going to come in right next to the right in between the fab and the space plane hangar, um, because you know. When you land on the runway, you have to, like, just drive all the way. You have to tug the shuttle all the way back into where it needs to go. But look, look we can just we can park it right next to the space plane hangar. So we don't have to, uh, you could just, just push it in, basically. It's right there. See, that's that's the more efficient way. That, that, that I, did, I definitely didn't do that because I couldn't make it to the runway. That did it be 
that efficiency, I know what I'm doing. Um, as we do up the asteroid, another thing here, um, I also have a Discord, by the way. Um, I'm only saying that because it's kind of important to what I'm... There were some people we were talking on Discord with some uh, some of the people on my Discord, and um, people were saying um, there was a small debate. I know we're pretty you know crazy debates. We have like some high level, super high education math debates where people were saying um, we were debating whether or not there was or was not an impact tolerance for asteroids, i.e., whether they can be destroyed or not. And I I was on the side of yes, they can be destroyed, and some other people said they can't be destroyed. Um, so, and then we looked at the actual game files, and it turns out that they have an impact tolerance of 60 meters a second, which means they could be destroyed. But that, but something weird happens during this wrench. First of all, if you want to join the Discord, yeah, link in the description. We're, all, we're doing challenges now, and it, that's pretty fun. So, if you want to do that, um, just, yeah. It's a great, great, great community there. A lot of people. We have, like, 65, 62 people. It's great. Uh, but, yeah. So, so, this is weird what happens in this uh, landing. So, um, we're just coming in re-entry now. There goes that, uh, that uh, whatever stage. It's just getting pretty much completely destroyed. And there it goes. And as you can see, we're barely losing speed. But here's where things get real interesting. I do have to try and pop the parachutes just for the memes, but it doesn't really work. But here's what gets interesting. Watch what happens to this asteroid as it comes in to the ground. Nothing. It doesn't explode. So, what? And then, here's where it gets even weirder. It gets even weirder right here. Watch. It... it, it it's bouncing, right? And then, poof! It's just gone. That's fucking weird, man. What's going on there? It's like I, I I go into the go into the tracking state or not the track of the map screen, and I'm like, hey, where's the spate? Where's it at? And it's just there's just no asteroid showing up. So I don't know. That's weird. I'll throw some cards up. That's the end of this video. Maybe you know, join the Discord. We can talk about it. I don't know. Like, to, okay, I'll just, I'll get out of here. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, please order a comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time. And bye.